I'm at the NASCAR Cafe at the Sahara Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada, and I came here to take on the B3, the big badass burrito. And this monster heavyweight is two feet long and weighs a whopping six pounds. So, but how many people have attempted the challenge thus far? Over 140. And how many have succeeded? Two. <laughs> if I win, I get unlimited rides on their roller coaster speed. Yeah! <laughs> but if I fail, I'm forced to wear one of these. A t-shirt declaring myself a certified weenie forever on their wall of shame. Now this baby better stay in Vegas. So let's kick some tires and light some fires! I'm Adam Richmond, a food fanatic who's held nearly every job in the restaurant biz. And now I'm on a mouth-watering journey to find America's greatest pig-out spots. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness and take on the country's most legendary eating challenges. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Carnivore Challenge. I'm no competitive eater. This is history in the making. Just a regular guy with a serious appetite. The hottest wings in the planet. <laughs> One minute counted. This is my Three. ultimate Three. hunger quest. This is man versus food. My coast-to-coast -coast dance looking for the money munchies has finally brought me to Vegas, baby. And I'm here to tell you that Sin City has got some sinfully good grub. Las Vegas' strip is lined with some of the most exclusive celebrity-owned restaurants in the world. And I'm not going to any of them. I'm here to hit some one-of-a-kind local joints beyond the neon lights. Everything in Sin City is larger than life, including the most important meal of the day, breakfast. Right now, I'm five minutes off the strip at Hash House of Go-Go to sample what they call here twisted farm food. Comfort food, but with that signature Vegas twist. For breakfast, when you wake up, this is where you go-go. Hash House of Go-Go takes mammoth portions of breakfast food and gives them a serious culinary upgrade. Yeah, the pancake that takes four people to lift. Only at Hash House of Go-Go. This is like an Aztec sundial. You can actually chart the seasons by this pancake. Let's put it down before we throw off the equilibrium of the earth. Big size and good food. Two great tenets of the Man vs. Food Bible. Enjoy, guys. They make meatloaf hash? Yes, it's a meatloaf with the red potatoes and roasted peppers and uh, fresh mozzarella and uh, spinach. That is, and it, and it looks so beautiful. But hashes are only the beginning of their gigantic and creative breakfast offerings. There's actually bacon in the waffles. That's how they roll here. It's a banana and brown sugar flapjack. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah, this is like where Willy Wonka eats breakfast. What is this over here? It's a griddled French toast. Oh so like candied my cinnamon action. Candied cinnamon pecan bananas. With every word, that dish gets exponentially better. <laughs> the mouth-watering masterpieces are many, but I came here for one thing, the legendary fried chicken eggs benedict. I join owner Jim Reese in the kitchen to witness the creation of a breakfast miracle. All right, Jim, take me through the making of the, I can't believe I'm even gonna say this, take me through the making of the fried chicken eggs benedict. You got it, let's do it. Jim takes a half pound chicken breast, seasoned with garlic, rosemary, sage, and other secret spices, and dips it in egg wash. Then it's ready for a unique breading. Now this is what's interesting, are those cornflakes? Those are cornflakes. That is so clever, so it must be crispy and nutty and a little sweet. After it's breaded, Jim drops the chicken into the fryer. So let's continue to assemble the, I love saying this out loud, fried chicken Benedict. With the chicken fried and ready, it's time to build. Jim lays down the foundation, griddled mash. Now, griddled mash, so you mash it and then put it on the flat top? You got it. Oh, so it gets like that crispy. You got it. Then he adds fried pasta, house-made buttermilk biscuits, tomatoes, spinach, and hickory smoked bacon. X marks the spot. What are we dropping on the X? Let's do the chicken. Operation chicken drop right here. Scrambled eggs join the mix, and then 
grilled cheese. Well, you don't even you don't melt the cheese on it like like under a salami. You grill the cheese first. Right. There's that twist again. Five minutes off the strip. Expect the unexpected on your breakfast plate. Speaking of which, the breakfast plate looks like a prop from Cirque du Soleil. Jim tops it off with a chipotle sauce oh. made from scratch. A little heavy cream, a little chipotle, and a lot of love. And a whole lot of love. And with a rosemary garnish, his work of art is complete. I saw off a piece and take my first bite. Oh my word. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, man. <laughs> the quality of the chicken is great. It's moist, it's juicy. Even under all this stuff, it still retains its crispiness. The potatoes on the bottom still have a little bit of a crunch. That's a Benedict. That is beyond Benedict. We left Benedict back in the Revolutionary War where he belongs. <laughs> oh my gosh. Coming up, a seafood mecca in the desert. And I love any food where the serving size is a <laughs> scoopful. And my battle with six pounds of burrito fury. I work here, and I've seen a lot of people try it, and I don't think you can do it. I came to Las Vegas, Nevada to take on an eating feat with long odds. The six pound big badass burrito challenge at NASCAR Cafe. Man versus food, baby. You know it. That's Man it versus food. But before I roll the dice, I have another stop on my chow down tour. I'm at Hot and Juicy Crawfish, just west of the Strip in Vegas, Chinatown. And this place is the home of sinfully spicy, monstrously messy, and definitely delicious crawfish served in their secret special signature sauce. You may wonder why I went all the way to Landlock, Nevada for crawfish, a relative of the lobster typically found in Louisiana. Well, at Hot and Juicy, these crustaceans are coated with a spice-laden sauce you can't find anywhere else. So the sauce is why you come here. Forget about G-Love. Hot and Juicy got the special sauce. They have four or five different levels of spice, and they've got four or five different flavors. You can go mild, medium, spicy, nosebleed. What do you like? I'm more of a medium, hot and juicy special guy. You are a medium, hot and juicy special guy. This has flavor, garlic, cayenne. It has, like, the sweets. You know, it's just like, uh, like a... He's going to take my job. Are you listening to this? This guy's better than I am. I love it. In the kitchen, I meet the master himself, owner Tim Nguyen. Las Vegas locals devour 1,800 of his spicy creations daily. This is the red claw crawfish, and this actually, you get them brought here from Louisiana, don't you? Right, we fly them in every morning. Every morning, so these are super fresh. Super fresh. Yeah, look at this, wait, wait, yeah? Look at him, <laughs> he's actually has a reaction. Throw your hands in the air. Don't wave them like you just don't care. Tim dumps the spirited bunch into the pot where they soak up flavor from chunks of garlic and his signature spice blend. Now, I've been around a lot of crawfish boils. I've never smelled one that smelled like this. So I know that there's definitely some stuff working in there that's unique right. to you. It has a lot of the Cajun spices that uh, everybody knows about. Uh -huh. The cayenne, of course you have the salt, some pepper, uh, garlic, butter. Right. And we add a little bit other special seasonings. I think that it's cool that you're using these Asian spices and then doing this kind of bayou staple and using your own twist on it. After the boil, Tim tosses them in a bowl with a few more secret spices, and I get my first taste of a hot and juicy crawfish. Absolutely delicious. And I think it's so great because you kind of wink at the heritage, you kind of wink at like the Creole heritage of it, and then make it something completely your own. Oh my goodness. As good as the crawfish is, mm. Tim has a special technique to impart even more flavor. We tie up the bag to keep it hot. Okay. It kind of steams the flavor into the crawfish as we deliver it out to the customer. Oh, I was so hasty. Oh my gosh, the flavor has yet to deepen. Let's do it. And I love any food where the serving size 
is a scoopful. This is truly like a man versus food serving. My order in the bag, it's time for a crawfish eating tutorial. Waitress Noemi Avalos lends me her expertise. Okay, now the first thing we're gonna do is twist and get the head out. Twist and get the head out. Now, the head has all the juice. All the flavor? All the flavor, so you gotta suck the head. Suck the head. Mm. That is excellent. Oh, that is so good. You know, it's when you <laughs> when you suck it, it in. <laughs> when you suck it in, it's delicious, and all of a sudden, like the smokiness of it, but it's not like a burn. No. It's more like a like a little bit of a.